Alright, <laughs> hey guys, so today is, well, it's technically not storming anymore, but this was very much a storm day, last night was horrible, today we're pretty much snowed in, so, and it's my off day, <laughs> yay, no work, so we're getting pretty low on food we have to kind of stretch everything till till friday so i figured uh it was time for another um budget cooking video uh just to kind of show you a few other things and somebody had asked if i could post how i did my tortillas so the first um video is going to be my bread recipes so how i make bulk breads and then freeze them and which is super simple if you're scared of making bread follow my instructions I'll make it easy so you can do it um, also tortillas and also um, how to make biscuits so I mean if you remember you know your grandparents making biscuits well I'm making biscuits okay um, and I'm also going to be making um carrot cake because hubby has a sweet tooth and he's craving something sweet and i have a can of pineapple and like i have a tendency to over buy carrots because they're like the cheapest vegetable you can get so we need to like you know use some so that we don't lose it so i'm gonna make some carrot cake and um also i'm going to make a marinara sauce like a pasta sauce in the slow cooker um i might add chicken i'm not sure and i might also do uh, either how to make chicken stock in the slow cooker or how to make chicken soup uh, we will see at the end of this because obviously sometimes i set myself up to make too many things then i get tired um and this is my comfy outfit um uh, again it's it's snowing out, so I always tend to wear warm stuff. Be thankful it wasn't yesterday. Yesterday I was in my onesie all day, uh, my little lion kigu. I did post that on Instagram. Uh, I just, except for when I was working, I was pretty much sitting down and playing it, um, Dragon Age in my onesie. So today is my Beacon Hills lacrosse shirt. It says Steric in the back. Yes, I ship Steric. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, Join us as we work on our cooking. All right, guys, so it's time to start the bread. So um, the recipe that I follow is Purbane's recipe. Um, you can, she has a YouTube channel. She hasn't been on in a long time. I really miss her. <laughs> um, but this, like, it's not exactly her recipe, but it, that's the base recipe that I started with. But just like she teaches, you work with what you have and I don't have everything there that she has plus I have like a few other extra things anyway so the recipe calls for a quart of warm water um, I have a quart is four cups I have three cups in here um, I'm actually gonna put a cup of milk and the reason why is because as you can see earlier I prepped some milk for other recipes and I have it left over and in general milk is pretty good for bread so if you're lactose intolerant don't put this step in. The other reason why is because I don't have any eggs. Um, I know it doesn't really make a difference, but uh, the recipe calls for four eggs and I don't have any, so I'm not going to be putting it in. Um, all right, so the main thing that we're doing with this is we're going to be blooming our yeast. So that was four cups of your liquid. So again, I put three cups of warm water and a cup of um, like lukewarm not lukewarm but like not really cold milk okay just if you do put milk in it uh, let it come to room temperature next we are going to put in a cup of sugar and uh, I prepped everything but forgot a spoon so stir that around a little bit to dissolve it We are going to put in um, three tablespoons of yeast and for that we are going to let it bloom for about 15 minutes some people do five I like to wait 15 let, let it get nice and bloomed especially since mine's in the freezer 
Um, and again, uh, as you've seen in previous videos, I store my uh, yeast in the freezer and I let it come to room temperature. All right. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to prep everything else. Um, one of the main reasons I do it this way is because you never put the salt in with the yeast while it's blooming. It impedes it. Um, and I, like, I've seen a lot of videos where people don't bloom your yeast. Um, honestly, bloom your yeast. It just it makes for a much better end product. So we have one cup of oil. And this is going to make a big batch. Okay, I know this is a lot of oil, but it makes a large batch of bread as well. And now it calls for half a cup of melted butter. I didn't have butter. I only had lard because um, I made lard soap not long ago. So again, you use what you have. And three teaspoons of salt. This is also, if you are going to put in... Um, eggs you would put three to four eggs in here okay so this is the mix I'm just kind of gently stirring it for the salt all right that is our oil and again we're just going to let this bloom for 15 minutes while that's going um, I'm gonna get started most likely on the um, tortillas all right, so we're well past 15 minutes. As you can see, my yeast has bloomed beautifully. We know that it's alive. It's good to go. And I'm just gonna put my oil into this. You can see kind of the lard is starting to solidify on the edges. Gently stir that in. <laughs> I can feel the sugar sediment on the bottom. All right, and now we're going to add the flour. Now, you might notice that I did not mention how much flour goes in this. It's because, honestly, when you're making bread, you shouldn't really measure. You should go by how it comes out. But we will see how it goes as well because she was using white flour and I'm using again whole wheat flour which behaves differently. So we're going to do this one cup at a time. I'll keep count because I always screw up with counting of this. So So 
window, and of course the cable right there. Not with something this big. So we're gonna need this. I don't need nearly as much as uh, some people do. All right, so now we're just gonna prep our bowl. So usually I use oil, but I don't have any. So we're gonna use a little bit of lard and we're gonna just, or our pans. We're gonna try to keep some of that because we've got other stuff that we're baking that we're gonna have to butter. So that's just some oil. And we're going to put our dough in here. And we're going to let that double in size. So we're going to cover it, double it in size. Usually we put it in the reptile room because it's warmer over there. It's probably what we're going to do. We're not going to bring you in there. <laughs> that's what you do with the bread. And we'll be back once this is ready to um, size into, you know, whatever we're going to be doing with it. Okay. All right, so now you can see the dough is double in size. So we're just going to kind of punch it down a little bit. We're going to set that out. And then I'm just going to... We're going to divide this into loaves. No. See how a quarter of one works here. Woo. Okay. I'm just kind of tucking everything in, inside. Don't be too worried if it doesn't look the best because it is going to rise. This one could actually take the whole thing, but we're just gonna. Sorry, my arm's in the way. And we're gonna freeze that one because that's an extra loaf. Though at the same time, if you don't want to make loaves, you can. Do you want bread six instead, or or buns? Sorry for that. Okay, because what you can do is you can cut these in little pieces and roll them to make breadsticks, or you roll them and put them in like your um, your pan for muffins and make um, make yourself some buns as well. Um, I've made burger buns this way. I've made hot dog buns by just making them cylin like cylindrical. Um, so like you can use this recipe and make burger buns. You can make hot dog buns. You can make you know like I said. Um, bread rolls, anything. So I'm just gonna put this in a plastic bag, push all the air out as much as I can, and, then, and this one's gonna go in the freezer. And then once you have it in the freezer, okay, once you want to use it, you take it out, you um, if you can immediately take it out and put it in your pan if not let it thaw first but you're better off just taking it out and then putting it in your pan let it thaw fully and then let it rise until it's doubled in size these we're going to cover and let rise again for about half an hour to an hour until they're doubled in size and then we're going to bake them 
guys. All right, so the lighting in here is pretty horrible, but this is uh, hubby's desk here. So the bread rose. It's getting really dark, like it's night time now. So we're gonna. It's been about how long now? An hour. Yeah, it's been an hour. So we're gonna stick these in the oven at 350 for what is it? 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. I'll tell you how long it is once they're out of the oven. <laughs> All right. Alright, so the bread is out of the oven. Um, as you can see, it's a little dark. It didn't burn or anything, but um, our oven runs really, really hot. So it's sometimes it's hard to you know, get it to come out good. So it did kind of sink a little bit, but it feels ready. So now we're going to start on the tortillas. Um, so I have two cups of flour in here and I'm going to put in a teaspoon of salt. Always mix your dry ingredients together first. All right. Now this is like a low fat tortilla recipe which is both good because it is low fat and also because it has a lot less ingredients and a lot cheaper ingredients. So this is one and a half teaspoons of vegetable oil. And three quarters of a cup of warm water. And we're just going to mix this up. I always scrape the bowls when I'm making dough. Because you just don't want to lose any of that stuff. Starting to get all together now. Clean hands. <laughs> always wash your hands before you're cooking. Something my mom ingrained in me when I was a child. So I'm just kind of kneading it a tiny, tiny bit, like you would uh, bread, but you don't want to overwork a tortilla dough. I'm just doing it to make sure that everything's together. And that was whole wheat flour. Um, in our house, we only work with whole wheat flour, which means that some recipes you do have to change a little bit because they don't, um, th they do work with whole wheat, but whole wheat behaves differently than white flour. So a lot of the times you have to kind of change your recipe a tiny bit. All right. So we've got our dough here. Seriously, guys, like. This is how fast tortillas work. All right. So what we do here is we're going to cut this into, how many do you usually do? Eight. Eight? Okay. So, oops. <laughs> All right. So four. Al likes big tortillas. Um, you can make them smaller if you prefer smaller sized ones. Just make make bowls. All right, and then you want to get them into your bowl as fast as possible and cover them with the clean cloth. Uh, it's not as clean as I would like to have it. Alright, and this is my heavy marble rolling pin. So you're going to roll your tortillas one at a time. And uh, obviously put a little bit of flour on your I don't have any flour. Just put a little bit in here. Alright, so put a little bit of flour on your surface and a little bit of flour on your pin. 
So you want to roll this as thin as you can and just keep rotating it in a count like in a clockwise like a quarter turn every time to ooh, whoops <laughs> to try to get as much of a circular shape as you can it's still sticking a little bit but there <laughs> dust the flour and then eventually you're gonna start seeing bubbles so while you're doing that one while that one is cooking keep an eye on it and continue with your next one and repeat until you have them all you can technically freeze your dough but honestly you're better off making your batch and freezing your tortillas if you want to make a lot of them. Um, in our house, they get eaten way before we would even need to uh, freeze them. But this is just mainly like, you know, for somebody who wants to save time, might just live by themselves and, you know. Um, I forgot the baking powder. Is it baking powder or baking soda? Baking powder. Yeah, it's usually like a teaspoon of baking powder that goes in there. But we've been out, how long have we been out of it and we haven't been using it? Wow. <laughs> For a few weeks anyway, we just didn't use it because we didn't have it. And they came out just as good. It actually, they, um, they rolled easier, didn't they? Like, um, like when you're making wraps and stuff, they rolled better. And the flavor didn't really change or anything, so... Alright, so there's another one. That ought to do it. So, that's one side. The dark spots here, just because, um, see look, they're actually scraping off, is because the, the pan had been used previously, so we still got a little bit of the uh, old flour on there. I should have wiped it down. But, um, do you want to get closer? You can see. So they're coming in. Actually, I'm getting a little bit of bubbling here. I've got a few bubbles. Can you see them? So, see, it's still, like, I think if you had baking powder in it, you'd be getting much more bubbling. But, honestly, like I said, <laughs> just... Put a teaspoon of baking powder in this and uh, you'll be good. Usually I kind of just break the bubbles. But yeah, it's really bubbling. Where's the bowl that we usually use? Up there. Huh? Up there. Up there? Okay. So, this is our tortilla bowl. We've got like one tortilla left. And this is usually when we make a batch, we put them in here. And then we just put it over like that. But that's because, again, we go through it so fast that we don't need to, um, like, store them or anything much. All right. So that is the tortillas. We're just going to keep making them. We'll probably show you the batch after. Alright, so they're done and we're taking a uh, snack break with some hummus um, before we uh, keep working. Alright, so now we're going to get started on the biscuits. So I have uh, two and a half flours, two and a half cups of flour already measured. Um, you are going to need a fork and a dough cutter um, so we're going to start here with I pre-measured everything so this is two and a half teaspoons of baking powder and then uh, half a teaspoon of salt let's see salt it calls for kosher so technically oh, I salt isn't that big of a deal for me so because te technically you should put more 
um, and one tablespoon of sugar pre-measured and I'm gonna go ahead and mix all of this in with a fork All right, and then the next thing you're going to put in this is half a cup of butter. It calls for, I didn't have any, so I'm using lard, which you often hear debates about what's better, butter or lard in biscuits. Some people go half and half, so honestly, you can use lard if that's what you have. And you are going to cut this into your dough. Um, normally don't have such a big chunk, uh, have like little square pieces chilled, or you can even freeze this and then grate it into your dough. Um, I mean, it's not as important for biscuits, but if you're making pie, that's like an awesome trick to get really good pie crust. So you just keep cutting in. You want it until it's like a sandy texture with the, uh, with the lard. So it's starting to get there. You're noticing it's kind of like pea sized. That's what you want. You want kind of a like a sandy texture. With like little pea sized pieces of lard. Alright, and the next thing you're going to add is three quarter cups of milk and one egg. Now this is like a whole egg so I'm just gonna scramble it. And we're just gonna Gently mix this in together. Clean hands again. <laughs> I just got a little wet spot, so it's sticking on my fingers. Don't overwork it, but you do want to make sure that it's all together. Alright. And I forgot to keep some flour for the board. So you want to try to roll it evenly. And this obviously all depends on how thick you want your biscuits, but you want them, you know. So just gonna grab some flour. So you should have a little bit of flour here and a glass or whatever cookie cutter you want to use. Get some flour on it and then there you go and just keep going. Oh that one. And if it starts to stick then you put more flour on your glass. And where's the, oh, there it is. Some people oil it. Honestly, you don't really need to with these. So you're just gonna put them on the pan. And then. 
take this dough, mix it up all over again. When I get to this point, sometimes I don't even roll it. I just flatten it out with my hand. Just goes to show if you don't have a rolling pin, you can still make it work. I remember making these with my grandma or well she wouldn't technically let me make them but <laughs> I'd watch her do these I've watched her do these for years those and molasses cookies which I am still trying to find the recipe for the day I have it I will share with everyone because it's a recipe that I never want to have lost ever and this is just the last piece. Don't throw it out. Just stick it on the pan and bake it with everything else. So there you have it. Here's all the, the biscuits. And we are going to bake this at 350 for, I don't know if it's 10 or 12. Um, for 12 minutes. We'll check at 10 though just to make sure, but yeah. So in the oven she goes. All right, so the biscuits are done. So we're just transferring them over to cool. I don't have any cooling racks anymore. I gotta pick a few up from the Dollarama. They're $3 each, but they're Betty Crocker and they're really good. So other than this one, which I saw was crumbling like that, the rest of them look good. Mmm, they taste good too. Do you wanna take a bite of the crumbly one? Come take a bite. Try not to eat them when they're too hot. <laughs> you will burn yourself. But um, in general, they came out really good. They're tasting good. Have these with tea. Um, yeah, they're traditionally with tea. Kind of like, I think, what are they? The American version of a scone? I will make scones one day. I love making scones. I promise I'll show you guys how to make scones and binox as well. That's what I made before, wasn't it? Was it binox? No, no, it was the um, Welsh cakes, wasn't it? It was what your friend taught you to make with the uh, candy peel. Welsh cakes? Yeah. I will make Welsh cakes one day. You guys will go crazy over Welsh cakes. Um, so yeah, that's how you make biscuits. And next up is the carrot cake.